this uh, video is going to talk about a problem of dealing with user inputs, particularly when the user is inputting numbers, because if they're inputting a number using the input box and you try to actually use that as a number, what if they don't type something that actually looks like a number? In addition, we're going to talk about different data types and a couple of techniques for checking for input errors. So first I'm going to run the code just to demonstrate what it does. So this code will ask me to input a number, but again this is using the input box and the input box actually is inputting everything as strings. And so if I type in something like 10, T-E-N, well that obviously does not look like a number. So I'll click OK and it says it can't convert it to a number. Now the program didn't error out um, and it asked me again to input a number. So this time I can input a number. I'll just input uh, 10.5. Now what this program does is it tries to display the number as an integer and then as a double. So let's see what it does. So it did say that the integer value was 10 and it says that the double is 10.5. So it successful, successfully did that. One of the issues with inputting an integer, though, is integers have a maximum range of about 32,000 plus or minus. And if you input a number that's bigger than that, for instance, let's put in 100,000. So I'll put a 1 and a couple five zeros. <clears throat> and we'll click OK. And it says it's too big or small for integer. And in this case, my program is actually going to convert it to a long and so it says the long is 100,000 and it also shows that the double value is the same thing. Now let's show what happens uh, when you put in something that's got a decimal fraction and you convert it to an integer. So let's say I put in 10.55 and I'll click OK and it says the number is 11. So you get the impression that that rounded up and, and indeed that looks exactly like what it did. <clears throat> but notice double didn't do any rounding at all and gave us a 10.55. This time let's put in 11.55 and uh, see what that does. Um, okay, so it looks like that rounded up again. That, that made sense. <clears throat> and of course the double is that. Well now let's show you something a little different. What if I just put in 10.5 and I'll click OK and it rounded down to 10. So the rule of 0.5 or greater rounding up was not held here. Now what VBA does is if the base number is even and it's 0.5 it rounds down to the even value. If the base number is odd, let's try the 11.5 and notice that rounded up. So if the base number is odd and it's 0.5, it'll round up. And if it's even, it rounds down. This is known as banker's rounding. So that's a little different and you need to keep that in mind. And now if I just enter an empty string here, it will just quit. There we go. So let's take a look at that code. So there's a number of things that I just want to highlight as we go through this code. <clears throat> First, you do notice that there is a comment up here at the top, and it's never a bad idea to put a little comment up at the top describing what the code is going to do. The next thing you see is the use of a constant here. So I've defined a constant overflow, and there's an underscore in between the word over and flow there. So I've described the constant, def defined it, as an integer and I've given it a value of 6. This is a constant that I'll use with the error handler. Um, notice how the constant is all uppercase. That's a visual clue to a reader of your program that the value is a constant and not a variable. Down in main I declared a number of variables of different data types. So the first one was an integer, the next one was a long and you'll notice over here the range of the integer is 
fairly small, but the range of long is quite a bit bigger. The integer variable data type uses two bytes, 16 bits to store its value, and the long uses four bytes, or 32 bits, so it's double the memory size. Now, on most modern computers, to tell you the truth, you got more memory than you know what to do with. And so you could just use long for all your whole number types. And I think probably many people do use long for all their whole number types and just dispense with the integer data type. And if you want to do that in this class, that's fine. Um, the next one is double. And you'll see here that a double has an extraordinarily broad range. The E here is the exponent. And so that means that that value can have essentially um, 10 to the 308th power, a very large number. It is limited to the number of decimal places in terms of the size of the fraction that it can actually hold. So if you look at the number of decimal values, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 digits of precision is pretty typical for floating point numbers, numbers with a decimal fraction. And double is pretty much what everybody would use for floating point numbers. There is another data type that's smaller than double that holds floating point, but single. But what's the point? Oh. And then I declare a string variable because, again, the input box always inputs strings. Um, this variable, a Boolean, actually I don't use in my program here, but we will talk about Booleans later in the term. So if we scroll on down a little bit, and my scroller's not working. That's not a good thing. Let me just uh, hit enter here and see if my scroll bar starts to work. And it's not, so I'm going to have to use my arrow key. Who knows why the scroll bar is not working? The next statement we see here is a simply a statement to tell Visual Basic what to do if an error occurs. And the resume next simply tells Visual Basic to go to the next statement if an error occurs. And down below, we'll see how that's used. Now, this program demonstrates a little bit of advanced programming that we have not discussed. And that is, we have a loop structure, which is a sim simply a structure to repeat code over and over again. So this code is simply going to repeat this loop over and over, asking the user for an input string until they enter no string, until they enter an empty string. And you can notice way down at the bottom down here, it says loop until the string equals the empty string. And the empty string is just a couple of quote marks with nothing in between. So inside the body of the loop, we use the input box to grab a string from the user. Uh, so here's the prompt. It's a very simple prompt about telling them to enter a number and then indicating that if they enter an empty string, it quits. These next two are simply a way to position where the input box comes up on the screen. This is a little strange to say the least, but it did position my input box where I wanted it. And these TWIPS measurement, uh, you probably never heard of that before, there's 1440 TWIPS per inch. So this X position pushes it across the screen from the left and the Y position pushes down from the top. You can leave that out, and it will just put the input box in the middle of your screen. The next statement is an if statement. And again, we haven't really talked about if statements yet, but uh, they're pretty easy to understand. And you'll notice that the if statement has two keywords. It's got the if keyword at the beginning, and it's got the then keyword here at the end. And in between, we have some sort of test. And that test will be either true or false. Now this test is a really nice one. This is a built-in function in VBA. And it simply says, is the argument that you put inside the parentheses, is it numeric? So what VBA does is it looks at that string and determines, could this be a number if we wanted to convert it to a number? And so is numeric, and then give it a string, is a fantastic function. And we'll probably use that a lot. Now, one thing I do want to mention, checking for user input 
is kind of a pain and in a lot of our early programs we're just going to assume the user enters a number if we ask them to enter a number and this is an easy way to check that but in many early programs I would say don't worry about it but I know some of you are probably thinking about it when you prompt for a number did the user actually enter a number or did they enter some garbage we never know what the users are going to enter well this is an easy way to check to see if they entered a number now this does not convert the string to a number it just checks to see if it could be converted to a number so the next statement down here then converts or tries to convert the string to an integer C int is simply a conversion function built into Visual Basic to convert strings to integers. Now, you don't want to just willy nilly do this, but since we checked to see if it was a numeric or looked like a numeric value, this is a safe thing to do. Except, what if the user entered a value that's too large for integers? If it's too large for integers, an error will occur. And in this particular program, this next statement you see down here simply checks to see if an error occurred. Because if an error occurred on this conversion because the value is too large, it generates an error. And the on error go to next simply executes this next statement, which we then check to see if we got an overflow. And we can do that by looking at the error object. So this is error.number returns the number of the error occurred. And we just check to see if it was the overflow error, which happens to be 6. But it's better to use a constant because then when you read the program, you know what error is being checked for right here. Well, if that indeed occurred, that means we had an overflow. The number was too large. We clear that error so that next time we come around it won't be set we clear it it turns it back to a zero we throw a message box on the screen indicating that the value was too large or too small for integers and then we try to convert it to a long now because longs are much larger in value this will almost always succeed and it's very unlikely that a user would ever enter a value but again remember longs max out at two billion and change and so if you typed in a value larger than 2 billion, this would also fail, but I'm not checking for an overflow on this one. So then we just display that long value. Otherwise, if uh, the error number was not an overflow, if this did not occur, we simply go ahead and display the integer value that did get converted when this successfully converted it. So the next thing we do, we just come down and we say, okay, what would that value look like if we converted it to a double? And so you'll notice the conversion function here for double, the CDBL. It'll convert it to a double, and that almost never fails as long as the string was passing the isNumeric test. So we convert it to a double, and we display the double down here with our message box. And finally, if the test is numeric failed, if that was false, it comes down and it does another test to see if it's not an empty string. If it's not an empty string, it says, oh, it's not a number and it's not an empty string. So they just tell the user here the input string can't be converted to a number. And then we come again to the bottom of the loop and the loop says if the string is empty, you're going to quit. Otherwise, it goes back up and starts the whole process all over again at the top. Now I know this is a little bit involved but there are a lot of things you can take away from this in terms of just using different data types, being aware of the range of those data types, that's something very important. Also being aware that when you use input box it converts, it always inputs as a string and if you try to store it into a numeric variable and it's not a number, your program's going to crash. You can test that out. And finally then, if you do want to check to make sure you have a valid numeric input string, you can use the isNumeric function. And finally then, the conversion routines will convert to integers, or convert to a long, or convert to a double. Now if you don't want to worry about the overflow, you can leave all this business with the error number and all that out of your program and just assume the user's entering values within the correct range obviously you can't ever really assume what the user will do but it's easier to do 
for your early programming practice. Alrighty, thank you.